Hi, in this video, we'll be talking about photogrammetry. And more specifically, how does Reality Scan take a bunch of pictures and turn them into a mesh? What we can do to get the best possible scan? And which objects scan well and which do not? Firstly, let's talk about how Reality Scan works. The images we take in the app are sent to the cloud. The algorithm then takes each image and finds distinct features in it. It then compares these features to the features from other images and tries to find a match. After some really fancy math, that honestly is the equivalent of magic to me, the underlying algorithm is able to determine the position where each image was taken relative to the subject. These calculated camera positions are then used to make a mesh. Now that we understand a little bit about how things work, we can focus on providing Reality Scan with the data it needs to create the best possible mesh. Here are a few best practices that will help you get the best scan. The first thing that we need to learn is coverage. Since the mesh and texture are entirely dependent on the images we take, we need to ensure our subject is covered from every angle. This means we need to take pictures from angles we might not have considered, such as from underneath and from the sides. We can use the air view to help us with coverage. We want to make complete loops around the subject at multiple elevations. Generally, if we see a sphere of images around the subject, we will have good coverage. We can confirm good coverage using the point cloud function within Reality Scan. We'd like to aim for a cloud that is entirely green. Reality Scan works by matching features from one image to other images. One way to ensure that we get the best results is making sure that all our images have nice big overlapping sections for the algorithm to match. Here's how we can get good overlap. Making sure each point on the subject is visible in at least two images. Ensuring that each photo sees 75% of what the previous one did. And not changing the viewport more than 30 degrees. It's also a great idea to frame our subject so that it covers most of the image. This way, a majority of the data in our images is being used to make a mesh or texture. If we want to capture fine details, we could move in even closer. In this case, the subject will be even bigger than our frame, but that's alright as long as we keep coverage and overlap in mind. We just need to be careful to provide a few images in between the shots where the subject fills the frame and close-up shots. If we take a moment to steady ourselves before taking each picture, we can avoid motion blur. This will ensure each image has maximum sharpness and detail, ultimately leading to a better model. Reality Scan has a cropping tool to reduce our area of interest. If we don't crop, the texture information ends up being spread out over a large area, most of which we don't actually need. So by taking a moment to do a simple crop, we get a more detailed texture with higher texel density. It's important to understand that there are some subjects that will not scan well regardless of the amount of effort we put in. On these occasions, we're hitting the limits of photogrammetry. Reflective objects. Reality Scan uses the information from our images to determine the texture for that part and to work out how to make a mesh. When our subject is very shiny, the images do not actually contain this information. We're just taking a picture of the light that is bouncing off of our subject. It is almost impossible to make good scans of reflective objects such as polished metal, glossy ceramics, and shiny paint. The worst case scenario is trying to scan a mirror, because we can't actually take pictures of the mirror itself, we're just taking pictures of ourselves trying to scan the mirror. Featureless objects. Objects with very uniform subjects are quite difficult to scan. The underlying algorithm is trying to match features across images, if those images have little to no distinct features, it's going to have a really hard time doing so. For example, this drinking flask is really, really hard to scan. Moving objects. It's really difficult to scan moving objects. This is because it's hard to get sufficient coverage and because older camera positions become incorrect when the subject moves. Subjects such as plants that are swaying in the wind should be avoided. It's far easier to bring them inside where there's no wind or to pick plants that move less. We've had some success with scanning faces in RS, but you'll have to find someone who can sit really, really still for the duration of the scan. It's not impossible, it's just really hard. One last thing I'd like to talk to you about is steric light and shadows. Scans done in harsh lighting will have shadows that are difficult to remove. Generally, we want to ensure that we have uniform lighting on our subject when scanning. 
It can then realistically react to a variety of lighting setups in our artwork. There are numerous ways to ensure uniform lighting, such as scanning under an overcast sky, casting shade across your subject in a sunny outdoor environment, or scanning indoors using a simple softbox. Alright, now it's your turn. We really look forward to seeing all the amazing scans and artworks you'll make using Reality Scan. If you have any questions or feedback, please reach out to us in the Epic Developer Community Forum. A link is provided in the description of this video. Happy scanning!